Welcome to Make Your Mark podcast, where guests share their experiences, insights, and tactics to help you accelerate your business. So building, scaling, and monetizing your business is made easier. And I will be your host, Kay Suthar. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Make Your Mark Podcast, and boy, do I have an amazing guest for us today. Now, her name is Nancy Marks, and after 30 years in corporate, Nancy took a creative leap and found her passion, get this guys, infused glass art, right? You're probably thinking, wait, what is that? Now, in the beginning, with a single class, Despite her initial self-doubt about having an artistic talent, to her surprise, she discovered a knack for working with glass and embraced the imperfect beauty of her creations. Now, Nancy established the Glass Arts Collective, but it's more than just a studio. It's a sanctuary where artists converge, forming an intimate community bond by the transformative power of art. It's a place where mental well-being flourishes as individuals articulate their emotional... Oh, let's do that bit again. It's a place where mental well-being flourishes as individuals articulate their emotions through artistic expression. Come experience the remarkable journey at Glass Arts Collective. Guys, you have to go to this, right? This is amazing. When Nancy was telling me about this, oh my goodness, my jaw dropped to the floor. Now, we're going to be speaking with Nancy a little bit more on how she managed to build such an amazing business. So please welcome Nancy Marks to the stage. Oh my goodness, Nancy, I'm super excited to have you here. Well, thanks, Kay. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. No worries. I've got so many questions for you. So many, right? Because this <laughs> is very, very different to uh, what our normal ge- normal guests talk about, right? But I had to have you on this show because what you do is so unique, right? And it helps so many people. And so before we get into the nitty gritty, I would love for you to share with our audience today a little bit about what that journey looked like to get to you to this point? Because I know there must have been some ups and downs, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, I grew up with a sister and a father who were very creative. And they could take a pencil or a pen and, and or crayons or anything, and they could make these beautiful designs. <laughs> and I would make stick figures that don't look like stick figures. You know, it's like I couldn't... <laughs> draw in the lines of a coloring book. I just, it just wasn't working for me. And I've tried different things throughout the years. And because I, I've always known that arts are a great thing for you to be doing. And it's for someone who works primarily with one side of my brain, you know, accounting, technical stuff, uh, having a release. I really was always looking for something and stumbled over. My folks are in a, an assisted living facility and there's a class for fused glass. And my mom was so excited. And I haven't seen her that excited in a long time. So I thought, what is this? I've never heard of fused glass. You know, and it's not glass blowing. It's like, what is it? So I went almost begrudgingly. I mean, I told myself I need to take a class. I need to be able to at least communicate with her about what she's doing and understand what she's telling me. And so I took a class. And I mean, I have to tell you, it was, I don't want to say I was dragging my feet when I went, I I don't want to be quite that dramatic, but I went in and just kind of sat down and and saw other people with these little drawings in their hands and stuff. And I'm like, oh, what did I just get myself into? And I thought, nope, I made a commitment. I'm just going to go for it. I have a go for it attitude and I'm just going to do it. I was so excited. Now, it's one thing to actually start playing with the glass and making something. And I was abstract. I wasn't trying to make, you know, the tree of life or anything like that. (laughs) Um, But when I had to go back about a week later to pick it up, what the kiln does to the glass. Oh, we'll go into that more. But, oh, I was, I was blown away. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a TV show. Wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, good. So, all right. I have to take a couple of steps back here, right? Because you mentioned 
um, fused glass is different to glass blowing, right? And and I thought it was very similar because I think I asked you the same question, right? And I think there's confusion there. So for our listeners again, can you explain what the differences are? Absolutely. Um, blown glass, which we've seen the show Blown Away, m- many people have from Netflix. And by the way, we want to do a fused glass version um, of the same show. We thought that would be really cool. So blown glass, you'll see everyone's working in front of a, a furnace that's about 2,000 degrees. Mm-hmm. They're sweating and they're moving very quickly because they have to. The glass is molten. It's dripping. It's And you have to know what you're doing and you have to go the next step. There really is no time for um, any hesitation. Now, fused glass. Yeah. We sit in a comfortable environment. You can have a glass of wine. Um, you can laugh with your friends. We got the music going. And it's putting pieces of room temperature glass together mm-hmm. and building out a design of abstract or a specific or flower or whatever you want to build. And it's not until it goes into the kiln is there any heat applied. And we don't touch hot. We're touching it at room temperature. So it goes into a kiln to close to 1,500 degrees. And it's a long cycle. It can go like 18 to 20 hours from slowly um, ramping up because you don't want to have thermal shock, uh, sort of like a scuba diver where you have to stop and have your um, brakes so that your oxygen level and everything balances back out with the pressure. We want the glass to all be evened out and have the same temperature before it moves to the next level. And so and the same thing coming back down. But yeah, no, we're comfortable. We're relaxed. We're having fun. We're laughing. I mean, it is it is really a trip to uh, be able to work with something. And you don't have to be perfect. Oh, my God. It's great. Oh, I love that. I love that. Because art can be what it what you want it to be, right? There's no kind of strict kind of lines or rules or anything like that. It's what it, what it is you want it to be. And I see that, guys, if you're watching this on video on YouTube, then she has got um, images, examples of that on her background right now, right? So you can see the different items that you can actually create with glass and it's unbelievable because some of it doesn't even look like glass I'm like that's actual glass like it's insane when you really kind of get into it on what you can create now Nancy what I love about what you've created is a space where it's so safe people come they create they have a natter, right? <laughs> you have conversations. And I guess it's probably like um, how, you know, when you go to a barber's or hairdresser's, right? And you have, yes. you, <laughs> you kind of talk to your hairdresser, tell them what's going on. They probably know some of the intimate secrets about you and your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so you created this really tight knit bond and relationship where people feel really safe when they come down. How did you do that? Because there's CEOs and business owners out there still trying to figure it all out. Um, I think it becomes uh, it comes down to I'm really authentic. Mm. And I really care about people feeling comfortable and not feeling alone and not feeling like an outsider. So everyone's always introduced to everybody else. Right. So whether you come in for a class or you come in as a new open studio person, um, I'm capturing your name if I didn't already have it. And I'm introducing you to everybody else. And all of the open studio members are also unofficially my assistants. If you wanted to ask them a question, they'll be right there for you. Openly, honest, happy to talk to you. Share what they're working on if you're looking around. Um, it's Everyone is there to help each other, and they all like the idea of sharing and being a community. It, it's it's an amazing environment. You know what? what everything you're just telling me there is more than a community. You've created another space for a family, right? Yes. That's what you guys are. Because what you're saying to me is everyone just chips in where everybody needs help, right? And exactly. that's what family does right there's no hierarchy or you need to go and speak to this person or this person only if you need certain things everyone just chips in and just helps everybody out which is amazing 
It I really mean, is. No, not many people can actually create an environment like that. And you've been doing it for years now, and it's getting better and better and better, which is great. Tell me a little bit about maybe some of the ups and downs that you faced, right? Because I'm sure it wasn't just smooth going, every, all the pieces fitted in place. There must have been a few things that you had to try out, different tactics to get it to where it is right now. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think the first challenge that was the biggest one was that I hadn't been a glass artist very long before I decided to open a studio. Um, um so I needed help from other people, which was fine with me. I don't have to know it all. I don't have to be the expert in things. And I brought in other people to help me teach and to help me grow. So areas like we also um, not only offer fuse glass, but we have stained glass and mosaic as well. And they're not, first off, they're not my passions. And two, I don't know them as well. So I have other people teach those classes. Wow. So okay. I would say... First and foremost, I'm probably a businesswoman Ooh, and yeah. from more of a business background. So I know how to run a business and decided the rest will come. This is this is meant to be. And I just believed in myself. Um, the second challenge was I opened just before COVID hit. Oh, <laughs> so goodness. that was a pretty big challenge to overcome. And there was a lot of doubt. Did I do the right thing? Um, you know, maybe this is the way the universe is telling me that I did something wrong. But Ooh. I knew, I knew in my heart that this was absolutely the right thing to do. And I kind of took a step back and said, okay, I have some time. Mm. Use this time wisely. So am I set up the way I'd like to be? Is my layout the way I'd like it to be? Um, are things easy for other people to find? Um, do I have good examples? Do I have good samples? Oh, wait a minute. I don't like that sample because someone might feel they couldn't do that, so they won't try the project. So I wanted to really make everything user-friendly and comfortable. So yes, we have a lot of projects in the studio that are from advanced artists, but I really try to hone that we're teaching techniques mm -hmm. in our classes. So when you come in, there's a technique you're going to learn, and then you can build on it. And you, there's no black and white trail since I can't follow a line to begin with. Um, <laughs> I work I work outside the box. I do not have a set list of classes you have to take in a particular order. You get to take ah. the beginning class. And that teaches you how to cut glass safely and, you know, comfortably. Yeah. And the first time people cut glass, oh, my gosh, the excitement. <laughs> I think I look forward to that reaction every day more than anything else because it's like oh wow you can do this and uh it it helped me put together I think and, and kind of gather my thoughts uh to pull together what I thought would be a great way to go oh wow I love that I love that and again I want to take a step back here because you mentioned that you are a business owner first right yeah you understand business and it's clear that you do because you you said that you brought in partnerships people that didn't know that knew what you didn't know you brought them in to teach your clients right people don't yes, understand yes. that on the on like the first attempt the first go of the business but you clearly understood that and you knew you didn't need to know everything about business about your niche that it is about partnerships right and then talking about partnerships Absolutely. I love the fact that, that you help your clients with emotional trauma, right? Whether it's de yes, depression yes. or anxiety, right? And they come to you to find, I guess, relaxation, right? To yes, find yes. Um, peace. And you actually have medical professionals in your local area that refer their patients to you which is amazing. Tell me a little bit about that. It never really occurred to me. Right. Um, I knew personally that it, it relaxed and it, it helped me through some traumas I was going through mentally um, with decisions I needed to make with um, 
a lot of different things in life. We'll leave it at that. And, um, but it never occurred to me that it would help somebody else. And um, I have joined several networking groups. And so people have come into the studio, including some therapists. And they were very quick to tell me, oh my gosh, this is, this is so great. Um, and not just therapists tell me. I mean, I just, I have a cute little story that I tell a lot of people that a mom brought her daughter and her friend her daughter's friend into her class. And she goes, I'm going to go sit at the other table. I'm going to sit in the corner. I have work to do. Just teach the girls, let them know what they're doing. And I'm over here. So ignore me completely. And I was like, "Mm, no. (laughs) And she goes, what do you mean? I said, you have to come and at least learn to cut glass. It'll take you just a couple minutes, but you should know what the girls are doing. And I said, you know, just step away from work for just a couple of minutes. It won't be long. And she made her first cut and she said, I'm staying for the whole class. Forget the (laughs) work. She enjoyed it so much. She actually called me the next day and said that when she got home, she was able to resolve the problem she was having in no time flat because her mind had cleared from the playing with the glass and thinking of something completely different. And she was able to get back to work in no time flat. And it was an easy breezy thing versus the stressful person who walked in the door. Wow. Oh my goodness. Uh, Okay. There's so many of us that need to be in that space, right? Especially, I mean, if you're a business owner, you've got so many things going on and, and you're an entrepreneur, like you still need time to stop, to relax, to just chill out so you can be a lot more productive later on, right? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I love that. Oh my, I'm not I'm going to have to come down now. I'm going to have to yes, come you down. Are. <laughs> like I need to see how this all works in action for sure. And the fact that you said that it, it gives people instant results instant clarification right and settles their mind so much faster whilst getting creative that that is insane right no medicine right you you don't need to be popping any pills it literally is just a natural calming thing that people can do absolutely and I think one of the things that helps um with the environment overall is I've got a quirky personality (laughs) <laughs> and I'm I'm a fairly happy person, mm-hmm. and I joke with people. They tell bad dad pun jokes. You know, it's like <laughs> it's kind of hard not to be happy and having a good time. And then when everyone yeah. else starts to get into it, and then if there's a group of different people who all come together for a class, by the end of the class, you kind of feel like they all know each other. So I have a, I ask them if, for permission, but I'll send pictures when everyone's pieces are done. That's my normal thing. And I'll ask the group, even though they're not the same people, you know, they're not a group of the same known people. Um, I'll ask them, do you want to see everybody else's pieces when they're done? They're like, oh, yes, please. I say, as long as I have everybody's permission, I will send out all of it so you can see you've been watching them build it and you'll get to see the finished products. Wow. And I get so many compliments for that. And they, I mean, I send to a group or an individual and say, your project's done and ready for its new home. Oh, that is amazing. That is awesome. But that's not all you do. You don't just stop there, (laughs) right? Because I know that you allow your clients to then sell their pieces so they can actually go ahead and make some money, right? Yes. So, yeah. And they can sell it. Uh, or buy it from the store and you sell it on their website as well or your website so people can see all the pieces and go ahead and purchase I mean that is awesome as well because you're giving back right and I guess it gives them satisfaction that they've created this and now they're selling it is going to a new home like you said tell me about that piece of it that's my open studio membership um they are like gym memberships so they pay monthly whether they come in every day or not. Um, And I have uh, my five days I'm open a week, at least four days have open studio, at least one uh, one time slot. And they just book it like a regular class. But what I realized is they're building a lot of art. And what are they going to do with it? I mean, you can only give so many gifts to your friends. (laughs) 
Um, and most of them don't have the energy or the wherewithal to create a Etsy site. So yeah. I decided that they should be able to put things in the gift shop, which I love win, win, win situations, always have. So my customer wins because my open studio members win because they can put something in the gift shop and sell it. Right. The customers who come in win because they have a much larger and broader um, gift shop ex exhibition, art gallery exhibition to see different types of artists work and the colors and the techniques that each one uses. And they're all different. Mm -hmm. So it's all of a sudden, instead of just sort of one style, when you walk in, you've got this variety. And so, and then I win because everyone's really happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. All you want to see is people satisfied, right? Walking yes. out the door with a big smile on their face. That is amazing. Really. And amazing. so I, I, I've actually revamped my gift shop. So I do revamp things mm. and I have now got it online so that I can ship throughout the United States. I haven't taken it beyond that because I want to make, I want to take baby steps. I want to make sure that the process works before I'm sending it over to you and over the pond. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have it broken down by the type of product as well as by the artist. So if you really like a particular artist, you can zoom in basically on just their products if you're interested. Oh, so that's... I'm really excited. This is, this is a project that was a bit on the overwhelming side to take on um, because a lot of my, Clients have a lot of products. Wow. So now I'm I'm uploading, I'm taking measurements, I'm taking the you know descriptions, trying to put it all on there. Then I have to feed a back end system to say how much this would weigh and the dimensions so wow. that the different shipping companies can say, give estimates of what it'd be. And I include automatically insurance. Ooh. So the shipping costs might seem a bit higher, but it's because it includes the insurance too. Of course, it is glass at the end of the day. So we've got to be careful on how that ships. So that makes complete sense. Wow. And so tell me a little bit about these events that you have. You have these magnificent events, right, for your clients where they can showcase all of their custom made items, right? Like I said, guys, listeners, right, if you're listening to this episode, like there's more to Nancy than what meets the eye completely. She talks about the, her glass business and the workshop, but there's so much going on. She gives back so much to her audience and her clients. And oh my goodness, she's just a giver. Now, Nancy, <laughs> <laughs> you told me about these events that you do. And it's almost like um, a gallery, right? A gallery yes. showpiece that where there's got all these different items and people come in um, take a look at them and also buy them, right? So tell us, Absolutely. how did you, as a business owner, come up with all these different concepts and decide that this is what you're going to do for your clients? This was like one of my more recent um, revelations. We had gone, and I don't do it very often, where we try to pack up part of the shop and take it to a show. But we did, and uh, two of my open studio folks went as well. And people got to meet the artist that had made the piece that they picked. And the artist lit up, and the customer lit up, and they, they just started a conversation, and this new friendship began again. And it was like, oh, how do I do that more? So through my of my open studio folks, we have picked either a month per person or a couple of people are getting together and doing it together because they didn't feel they had enough stuff to show for, you know, by themselves or they were uncomfortable showing by themselves. And, and so I have, a, a, I took away one of my work tables and gave it to the artist of the month, basically. So they could have a gallery exhibit and it's on the wall. It's in part of it's in the gift shop. So it overflows. And then I also have it on their stuff all on the website, of course, under their name. So you can find them that way. Um, and then I, I do an artist reception. So they get to pick a date mm -hmm. and I have food brought in and we do demos and people can come in and actually meet the artist and hear their stories and see where the inspiration comes from for their various pieces and their backgrounds. I mean, these artists have phenomenal backgrounds. 
Um, and it's a chance to share my friends. Wow, that is amazing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, right? I've not heard of Fuse Glass until I met you, Nancy, right? Is this something that is very accessible to everybody worldwide? Um, it's becoming more accessible. I wouldn't say it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, stained glass is much more known. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who know stained glass. And you think of church windows right. usually initially. Um, but it can be smaller pieces too. And then mosaic art is kind of a mixture of glass and tile and a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So people know a basic on those. But fused glass is fairly new. Um, and there's a lot of little nuances. So I like to give a lot of the background in my intro to Fuse Glass. Um, and I had a group of, of women came together and they're from state. They have been doing stained glass together for years. And they thought they'd try Fuse Glass because they didn't know anything about it. Right. And they couldn't stop thanking me for giving more of the background and the explanation of, of what makes Fuse Glass so different. Oh. So, I mean, the type of glass is different. It has to be able to handle high temperature and how it all works and what's the best way to work with it and what's, you know, the nuances of all of it. And at first I thought they were, and I know this is a terrible thing to say, but they thought they were, I thought they were annoyed at first oh. because I spent so much time and they're like, oh, no, no, no. You have to understand. We loved that. We love stained glass. And we know the background of stained glass, but we happen to really want to understand. And you explained it. And she, they were like, we just were blown away. We thought we were just going to come in and, you know, make some glass. But you made this so much more interesting. Ooh. And it was like, oh, yay. <laughs> and then we went for Nancy. Um, I just, I like making people happy. I like finding ways of... I guess I'm a customer service person. Um, have I always done it well? No, <laughs> I learned that. Um, but I've learned, I guess, through all my career and all my opportunities, how to sort of overcome mistakes I've made in the past or not uh -huh. done well. Maybe not, not a mistake, but maybe something I didn't handle as well as I should have. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of pouring it all into the studio. And yeah. I am loving it. I mean, I'm supposed to be in retirement. And there's no way I wanted to retire. So <laughs> I've taken on a business with a lease and, a, you know, a, an actual brick and mortar store yeah. that people can come into. Um, and I know there's people doing it virtually. And I think that's really cool. I I want to see the people. I want I want to talk to them. I'm a little, you know. This is about me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. You really want to connect with people is what I'm hearing, right? It's the connection yes. is a big thing for you. And it is for a lot of people. That's why you have built such a tight knit family, right? Where you are. That is amazing. Now, I know Nancy at this point, people are like, where is her workshop? How do I get hold of Nancy? I need to give this a go. So where can they go to connect with you? Um, I would highly recommend they come to uh, my website, glass arts with an S collective.com. And I have a whole bunch of videos. I have all kinds of things to see, but sign up for my newsletter. Ooh. It's right on the front page. You can sign up for my newsletter and I give out tidbits. I give out stories. Um, my personality comes through in my newsletter as well. I don't try to um, have a just newsletter. I mean, I have newsletters and you know, when <laughs> new classes are coming, you get discounts on occasion. I'll have little promotions just for the people who are on the newsletter mm -hmm. and you get definitely more of an understanding of things going on. So I'll give tidbits about glass and I'll give tidbits about people and I'll let you know different things about our artists that are doing something special, like our artist um, exhibits. Mm -hmm. So everyone kind of gets to know each other and it's a little piece of heaven. It's a once a month newsletter. So I don't overwhelm. And I do not sell that list. Um, because again, it's a community that's mine. Yeah. And they're, they're there because of me and because of what I offer. And I don't think that that trust should be um, broken. Right. Absolutely. No, I love that. I love that. Now, just out of interest, 
I'm probably doing this more for myself right now. When's your next, I guess, event or workshop where beginners can come in and try it out for themselves? Oh my goodness. I have almost every day I'm open. So my introduction to Fuse class. So my classes, I start at 12 and I book usually a class at 12, class about three or 3.30 because that's when kids get out of school. But I teach seven and up. So a lot of times it's really nice to be able to have family come in after class. There aren't always after school programs and that's not what I am, but um, you can come in and take a class and there's one in the evening. So there's three different times during the day, five days a week. And I always have the intro to fuse glass class uh, because that's, that's the beginning place. And that's where you can get your uh, toes in the water Wow! Uh, and try it out. Oh, that is. And I have to. I have to let you know that yeah. um, I'm a small business, and I'm very proud of it. But I was recognized by the city of Westlake Village, California, Ooh. for being the business of the quarter. Oh my so goodness! I was. I mean, I congratulations, I, Nancy. That's they, huge. They, it was. Uh, it. It was. I. I love the the community I'm in, and I kind of feel like I'm a hidden gem. And I found out I'm not that hidden. They actually found me. <laughs> and that Don't recognition, that? That, that is I awesome. do. You know, it's, I'm not right on the street. So you don't drive by and see me. You have to actually know where to go because um, I'm in an industrial park in uh, Westlake Village, which is part of Thousand Oaks, California. I am northwest of Los Angeles. So if you were going to drive up to Santa Barbara, you're going to go right past and so it's it's a nice community. I mean, it is a really nice community I'm in, and I love it. And then to be recognized by that community and that city that I exist and the Chamber of Commerce. So um, <laughs> I'm still a little uh, overwhelmed by all of it. But it's great news, right? It's so, so amazing. you got to keep on going and getting bigger and bigger because it's by the sounds of what you're saying to me, there's a lot more people that will benefit from just taking the time out and getting creative because it can bring so many different results to the body, right? To the mindset, yes, yes. Um, which is awesome. Oh my goodness, Nancy, it was. And, it, and it's not just taking a class. I mean, you can just come buy a gift. We've got the holidays coming up. I don't, um, but there's always holidays coming up. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you want to get something special for that special person handmade gifts and handmade stuff as well as commissioned work yeah. um we've got a couple of things going on with some of the artists are doing commission work for people making something even more special so yeah. it there's so much in a little space that it, it's i'm just i'm so excited because it's more than i ever thought it would be absolutely and you know what you make a very good point there with the holidays around the corner if anyone wanted to buy something for their loved one that's special that's unique right they won't be able to find it anywhere else in the stores or on the high street right it'd be very unique and special to that person this is where you guys need to come you need to go to glass arts collective right and go and take a look see what's there and buy something that's super super special customed right and Oh my goodness, it's going to blow their socks off. They're going to be wondering where you got this from. Or even better, Nancy, they can go in and create or design, make something for their loved ones. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And one of the frequently asked questions is it food safe? And most of the glass is. Uh, so if it's a concern, just ask. But I try to be really clear about which things are food safe. We do bowls and plates and platters and, and even punch bowls and vases and just wall art, table art. So some things don't need to be food safe. But we do have a lot of th Most of it is. And that's, I think, important for people to know, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, listen, you need to reach out to Nancy right now, especially with the holidays around the corner. You know, if you've got questions, if you're not too sure, if you want to pop in, if you want to do a workshop, go ahead and connect with Nancy right now. Go and be part of her newsletter so you get updates about what she's doing in the future because she's one of those people that's never going to stop. It's only going to get better, right? And you don't want to miss out on any of that. So go and connect with her. Nancy, it was so amazing to have you on here. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank 
you, Kay. Oh, I, I enjoyed being on it so much. Thank you. No worries. You're very welcome. Thanks for listening to Make Your Mark podcast at www.makeyourmarkpodcast.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get this and every other episode that comes out. We have lots of great stuff coming, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And thank you in advance for all the reviews and comments. I appreciate it so much. And I look forward to serving you in next week's episode.